everyone, little K here, little K artistry in my studio. Welcome to my art channel. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I want to say thank you to all those of you who have subscribed. If you haven't done so yet, I hope that you enjoy these videos and that you will consider subscribing to my little channel. Thank you so much for considering that. I recently did a video on the how-to of how I make my spinner that I use, which is this spinner right here. And that is video number 89, if you're curious about how I made the spinner that I use. Today I am going to be doing a larger canvas. This is 24 by 24. And I will be doing this in a style of the blooms that my mentor, one of my mentors, Rinsky Daunia, does. And this is one of her blooms that she does with phthalo turquoise and I kind of guessed at the colors so mine will be similar to hers but not exact which is fine it doesn't need to be exact and I'm going to encourage you if you have not subscribed and followed to Rinsky Danya's page on YouTube she also has Instagram she's on Facebook as well she is just the most amazingly talented sweethearted delightful woman and I'm just so honored and feel very lucky that I found her. She, one of her bloom videos, the pink, the big pink one that she did, is the first fluid art video that I ever watched on Facebook. And I think it was one of her shorts. So then I went over to YouTube and I found her on YouTube and that was over a year and a half ago. And I continue to be amazed and just fall in love with her and you will too. She's delightful and so extremely talented and down to earth. She's very similar to me in that she gets her inspiration from nature, from the world around her, as do I. And her, her paintings are just beautiful. Her work is extraordinary. She does several different styles. The one I'm gonna to hope to achieve today is one of her five petal blooms. And this is gonna be a little bit different for me because normally I do a light background and today I'm gonna to be doing phthalo turquoise background. Uh, one of the questions that I have received from several of you, and I'm going to answer it right now, is do I do anything to the back of my canvas? The answer is yes, but maybe not what you think. So let me show you the back of this one that's ready to be painted. I don't tape my canvas backs. I feel that the it's the reality of the painting, that it's handmade, it's one of a kind, and you're going to see some of the paint on the back this part goes against the wall, you don't see this. So this really doesn't have to be perfect. So I don't tape the edges. What I do, however, before I'm going to paint, usually a couple hours ahead of time, I will take my squirt bottle with water. I will lightly spray the back of the canvas. Doesn't matter what size I use, I always spray the back of it. And then I do apply a small amount of the gesso, gesso, however you want to pronounce it. Some people say it's gesso, some people say it's gesso. I don't know, I'm gonna say it's gesso. Maybe I'm guessing wrong. <laughs> Either way, a small amount of this, spray it with water, and then I do put one layer of this on the back. What does that do, you ask? Well, it tightens the canvas so that it's super tight so that there's no dip in the middle. And I have done, I, I don't even know how, I haven't counted how many canvases I did in my early days when I did not treat the back of the canvas and it had a little bit of a dip. It wasn't quite pulled tight enough. And I would make a beautiful bloom or whatever it was. And then slowly as it dried, it would kind of, some of it would sink back in the middle and it would distort the picture a little bit. And it really frustrated me. So a little water and some gesso, gesso, if you know how to pronounce that word right, please comment and tell me how it's actually supposed to be said. I'm gonna call it gesso until I know better. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I know that's a really stupid joke. I need to stop with that. Okay, so this is my spinner, 24 inches, and this is a gallery wrapped canvas, 24 inches square. I am going to, hopefully I'm gonna be telling you all the colors that I'm using. Again, if you wanna see this done the original way, go to vi uh, visit Renska Daunia's page on YouTube and subscribe and follow along because she just, I, I can't even, she's amazing. So go and watch her stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt one like hers today. And I, I just, I love the blooms. So I'm gonna give it a go. Do I have one behind me? No, I had one here a few days ago that was just, oh, here it is. This is one of my successful blooms actually. 
This is a little bit of a different style. This is not, this is using the base paint, the pillow paint that uh, Sh um, Shelly Cuethers uses in, in the Shelly Bloom pour. That's what this is. And then I use, I don't know if you can see if I show it close enough, I did use a little bit of the soft gloss gel and I put some texture around the outside edges of the petals. I haven't sealed this yet, I'm waiting for it to cure. So that is one of my other balloons that I really, really like. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. I will tell you the colors that I'm using if you wanna try and recreate this yourself and give it a go, feel free. I will tell you as I go what I'm doing. I wanna thank you all for watching the video and for your sweet comments. Several of you mentioned that you liked my sense of humor. <laughs> Thank you so much. Most people find it rather annoying, but I appreciate the kind words. You all said that I should talk more in my videos. I, I try not to talk because I want the art to speak for itself, but I will tell you what I'm doing and the colors that I'm using. So if you're new and you want to give this a go too, I, I will let you know what I'm doing. First of all, I want to tell you another of my mentors, Olga Sobi. I did take her class. And the colors that I'm using today are mixed with Olga Sobe's pouring medium. And uh, you can go right onto her page and you can sign up for her class and get her pouring medium. So this is Olga Sobe's pouring medium that I am using. When Skedania does a Dutch pour that is just paint and water. I'm not doing a, a traditional Dutch pour because mine actually has pouring medium and hers just uses water. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. So you guys, um, this is gonna go normal speed, hopefully it won't be too long. I'm gonna give this a go and see if we can make something pretty here today. So I'm starting with, this is phthalo turquoise. I ran out of phthalo turquoise. So all I did was I mixed equal parts. Actually, it might've been a little bit more phthalo blue. I mixed phthalo blue and phthalo green, and then a little bit of titanium white, just to lighten it up a little. And I got this phthalo turquoise. So if you also would like to use phthalo turquoise, but you don't have any on hand, you can mix it. If you have phthalo blue and phthalo green, you can make your own phthalo turquoise. I just really love learning new things about fluid art. And one of the things that I've really just been amazed is all the color theory and the different ways to mix colors and which colors go better together, and which colors may brown. We <laughs> don't ever mix red and green. Don't ever mix purple and orange. <laughs> I mean, unless you're going for those colors. Yellow and black tend to make a real, actually, I think yellow and black make a really beautiful, almost like an olive, a dark olive green. So if you're going for a camo look or something like that, then you can mix yellow and black and get a really, a really deep green. But if you don't want the colors to mix and you don't want browns or greens, then yeah. But I, I really enjoy, part of it, if you guys have been following along since the beginning of this channel, I think I mentioned in a couple of my videos that originally my fluid art started just, I started painting rocks and it wasn't fluid art at all, it was just art therapy from my therapist, and without going into too much detail, divulging too much information, I did have some traumatic experiences uh, recently, uh, last couple of years, and my therapist recommended, in order to help me with my trauma responses and my PTSD, she recommended that at the tender age of 53, that I take up art, and I tried to explain to her that I'm not an artist, and I don't have any art training. I didn't go to art school, other than the art that I took in high school. I graduated Yarmouth High School, if any of you are from Maine. If you are, give me a shout out. I had Mrs. Tarbox, interesting name for an art teacher. She was wonderful. But I just did not have, apparently, I had more of an interest in English. <laughs> and I thought I was going to become an English teacher. So I didn't really do much with art, but I did like it. I never got a chance to really progress and try new things until, like I said, my therapist said, hey, have you ever tried painting? And I said, no, <laughs> because I'm not an artist. 
And she said, don't worry about the outcome, just focus on the process and find a way to do it that relaxes you, takes your mind out of that trauma response, if, if any of you are familiar with that term, takes your mind out of the trauma, the uh, flight or fight or flight trauma response, takes your mind out of there and goes to a very safe, relaxing place. She taught me all about breathing. She taught me about the importance of silence, which is why I really hate talking in these videos. So art is therapy for me. And if you have been able to see any of my previous videos, you might have mentioned, you might have noticed that I mentioned something that I'm going to be starting called Art Beyond the Canvas. And I will be talking a little bit about that as the days and the weeks go on. I'm not ready to launch that yet, but it is something that I'm really considering doing. It's a blending of art and and life coaching because I am a certified life coach and it's a, a unique it will be a very unique way to blend the two the way that I've been able to do it it's not therapy it won't be art therapy because I'm not a therapist but for me it's art therapy so that'll be coming along in a couple of months Maybe sooner if I can get it together, but I'm not rushing. It will happen when the time is right. And that will be art beyond the canvas. That will be something that I'm really looking forward to seeing what I can do with that idea because I like the idea of blending the process of art with healing and life coaching is, has been a passion of mine too. Okay, so I don't really have much on the sides yet. This is a little bit of finger painting that I like to do. I do like to put a little bit along the sides just because it does wet the sides down so when I get ready to blow the, the colors out they won't get stuck. They'll actually go down the side. The petals of the bloom hopefully will go a little bit down the sides if the sides are a little wet. If you're watching this and you don't live in Maine, or if you don't live in the United States, please give me a shout out, write a comment, let me know where you're from. I'm very curious to see where these videos are reaching. It would be neat if I could get, I know we'll have some Canadian one, uh, subscribers, and that is fabulous. I always make a joke, I know it's not called Canadian, but I always joke and say that I know some Canadians from Canada. <laughs> we go up over home there, eh? My in-laws, uh, my family are from Calais, so I did go to across the border into Canada a few times. St. Stephen, a lot. I believe we went to St. Andrews once. And if I remember correctly, there is a hotel called the Algonquin, is that the name of it? Big, beautiful hotel. Didn't get to stay there, but I did get to see it. So much for not talking, right? Okay, so this is my base. I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a few colors. While I'm doing here is just, I have my torch on low because I don't wanna scorch my paint, but I'm just popping the bubbles a little bit. This is just a, a kitchen torch. You can get online, got mine online. Okay, so the colors that I'm going to be adding to this, the first one is phthalo green because this is phthalo turquoise. So this is a mixture of phthalo blue and phthalo green. So I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of that right in the middle, right there. Phthalo green, you don't need very much. And that is from Amsterdam, phthalo green. And this is phthalo blue because in order to make phthalo, in order to make, whoa, the phthalo, phthalo turquoise that I'm using, I mix phthalo green and phthalo blue. So I'm using phthalo green and phthalo blue in the actual bloom. There is a lot in my bottle, and I don't want to make a mess, so I'm just going to pour a little bit of this into a cup, there we go. and then we'll pour it out. So this is phthalo blue, these 
these are the two colors that I used to make the base. And this is a little bit of iridescent gold. I'm a little bit concerned with this mixture of paints because the blue, that might be a little bit too much gold. The blue that I'm using, the phthalo blue, is from Liquitex Basics, and Liquitex Basics sometimes make a lot of cells, and I don't want a ton of cells in this flower, so I may end up blowing this out and it looks horrible. I hope not, but we'll see. And this is just titanium white, and again, this is the mixture, the pouring medium, mixed with mix with my paints and it's from Olga Sobe. This one might be a little bit too thin. See how it's sinking? Let's see. That one might be a little too thin. This may end up looking terrible, you guys. If it does, I'll scrape it and do it again. No biggie. Okay. Now I'm going to blow it out. This, I don't even remember what the name of my hairdryer is because it has so much paint on it. It's just a little travel size hairdryer and I think this was 1600 watts and that's really all that you need. And then I just, I had to tape the diffuser onto it because it didn't come with one that was wide enough. So I'm gonna put it on low and it, I don't know if any of you have done this or not, but in order to do these blowouts, you need cool air. And instead of holding the cool button down, I just put a little uh, wad of wadded up paper and held the button down and then I taped around it. So the cool button is constantly held down on this one now. So all I have to do is hit low or high and it comes out cool. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, here we go. Take a little breath. I hope this doesn't look like butt. If it does, it'll be pretty butt. Not too bad. I found too in the blowing out of the petals, when you blow it out, if you tilt it just a little bit, you can turn the petal if you want to make five. Otherwise, sometimes it gets, they get too far apart and you end up with only four. I don't know what it is about the five petal blooms, but I really like them. That phthalo green is just peeking through. That's so pretty. Just gonna stretch them out a tiny bit just for the shape so they're all about the same size. Now, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but one thing I forgot to do was a puddle <laughs> around the blowout because I got so busy talking about Canada <laughs> or whatever I was talking about. I did not put the puddle around, so hopefully this will be enough. All right, now I'm going to just torch this real quick. The other thing that I like to do that I also learned from Winsky is just to define the petals a little bit. I don't usually go in very far. I might go in maybe an inch. I don't go all the way into the gold color just because I like the center to be a little bit bigger on my flowers. It's completely up to you how you do it. It's your art. You make your art your way. Just make the art. This one will be kind of pretty. Okay, time to spin. You guys can let me know if you like this at all. I think I'm liking the color. I don't know what the composition is going to look like. Let's we'll kind of wait and see.
One of the things I've also discovered is the use of rags. You can just rinse them out. I do use paper towels for some things, but I found, especially in the very beginning, oh, this is kind of pretty. In the very beginning of my fluid art journey, I was using a lot of materials and I really felt like there was a lot of waste. So I like, where's my dotting tool? my favorite dotting tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define these petals a little bit more just because I'm feeling like they need a little bit of that. What do you think? Just makes it a little more interesting. I try to go with the natural lines, how they, how they blew out. What do you guys think of that? It's kind of a neat little. It's super pretty. Okay, I'm gonna spin it a little bit more. That was just a, I used to do Mandela art as well before I got into fluid art. This is just a dotting tool. It's a different size dot on each end. All right, let's spin this one more time. A little bit harder. So what I did the first little bit with the blowing out was to create the bloom and get the basic shape down and now what I'm doing is I'm just stretching that basic shape to make it a little bit bigger it looks like these may end up going off the canvas a little bit I don't know how I'm gonna like that Let's spin it one more time a little bit faster So I've got one that's already come off. So the original blowout is the making of the flower and the composition. And then the spinning is the stretching of that composition. So make sure the one thing, the biggest mistake I made in the very beginning of this was not putting enough of a base coat down. So my when I was trying to stretch my design, it wasn't stretching, it would just stop, and then it would be all distorted. So I recommend, make sure, you saw, you saw I had two cups, and I still had some left over. I had two cups of this base coat, and these are 16 ounce cups, just so that you know, these are 16 ounce cups, and they were both about three quarters full, and I still have about a third in this one, if I want to do any touch-ups or to go around the edge. And just really important to make sure that you have a lot of base coat down so that when you go to spin, your bloom will actually stretch. Make sense? Now if I had this on my larger spinner, I could scoot it over and then stretch different sides, but I don't want to distort the center. I think that, that center part looks really good. Looks like the edges are getting covered really nicely too. So that's excellent. A couple of spots here and there. Okay, now I think I'm going to continue stretching, see if I can get these a little bit bigger. Okay, I've got a couple of bubbles. It's really important, I think it's important, for me anyway, in my style, to make sure that if, if it, at all possible you pop the bubbles before you stretch because, let me see if I can point one out to you. Uh, let me see here. Oh yeah, okay, so right here, I don't know if you're close enough, if you can see this right here, that was a bubble and that was a bubble. And what happened when I, when I blew out the original design, there were two bubbles on the very edge. 
and then when I stretched it, the bubbles didn't move, but the paint did. So the, it made these lines, and now I have two bubbles at the end of each line that had popped. But if I had seen those earlier and popped them, that wouldn't have happened. But you know what? Art is not perfect, but I really like this. What do you guys think? Are you liking this? I think this is quite lovely. This one is a keeper. Some of them I scrape and and then just gesso over them. And some of them I keep. This one, I think this one's gonna be a keeper. This is really nice. The center is a little bit off center, which is why I think it's a little lopsided on the canvas, but I really don't mind it. The perfectionist in me wants to just pick this up and slide it to the middle, but can't do that. So I'm going to stretch it a little bit more, and then I think I might do is just tweak this petal a little bit, because it is mostly off, and I don't want it all the way off. So I may shrink that petal a tiny bit, just to kind of make the composition a little better. That's another thing that I've learned while doing this, is I've learned about color theory, just all from these wonderful artists that I've been following on YouTube. Learning about color theory and and then composition. So I really like this. This is really pretty. This is this is how I was hoping it would come out. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I am going to tweak this one a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the extra, this is kind of how I do it, I put a little bit of the extra base kind of right where I'm going to tweak. And then with my, this actually, if you saw my video number 89, and the two items that you need to purchase to make my spinner, one of them is a cake stand, and these two tools came with that cake stand, and I use both of them quite a lot. So that's an added bonus. So I use this little cake, uh, I think this is actually the server, <laughs> the cake server. And then what I will just lightly do is pull some of the base, the background color over to just redefine this petal just a tiny bit. I don't want it to be off the canvas quite as much as it is. So we'll just kind of go like that. See if we like that a little better. Yeah. And sometimes I just have to reshape it. So all I did was a base coat. The base coat was a mixture of phthalo blue and phthalo green to make phthalo turquoise. And then I added phthalo green, phthalo blue, a little bit of iridescent gold, and then titanium white in a puddle around the outside. And I think part of the reason why my white is looking very, very thin is I think, it, I think it, the mixture was actually a little bit too thin. I might have put a little bit too much of the pouring medium with the color. So I'm looking at this and I think, I think it's done. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> and I think the composition, yeah, I think it goes like that. I think it goes like that. What do you think? I hope you guys liked this. I hope it was enjoyable and you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Again, I appreciate you. Please subscribe. Please
please share and like and comment and all of that stuff. I appreciate you so much for joining me. Hope this was enjoyable for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun. I had a blast. Thank you very much for joining me. This is Little K, Little K Artistry. I will hopefully uh, see you on the next video or you'll see me on the next video because I can't see you because you're in the internet. <laughs> Have a great day. Mwah. Thank you.